who else is in this space? Does Intuitive have it to itself? Oh, they are they are absolutely the the market share leader. They're the Goliath out there. Um, there's some upstarts. We'll talk about them in a second who who want to hone in on their territory. But this has been, you know, they've been groundbreaking and controlled this market for the last 16 years. They they've got 3,600 of their Da Vinci systems installed um, throughout the globe. 2,400 here in the U.S. alone. Um, they are. If you're going to get robotic surgery at this point in time, it's going to be done using a Da Vinci system, and of course, that's that's very good for investors, right? Because you know, first you've you've got these systems that are being sold, and of course, they're not cheap, right? But they also have you know recurring revenue streams that they receive from selling those or installing those systems, because every time a procedure is done, you know, some instruments need to be discarded and thrown in the garbage. New instruments need to get replaced. Um, as it stands now, we're talking about a market that's about 2.3, 2.4 billion, and you know they it could grow you know fairly exponentially over the course of the next decade or two. Right. So you've got that razor and blade model that we know is extremely effective, and 70 percent of their sales right now come from that recurring blade type model, which seems really promising. But you mentioned that there are some upstarts that could threaten them. Yeah, there are a couple different companies. One is one is really an upstart, and the other is just a deep pocketed company. But uh, the upstart is a company called uh, Transenterix, and they are developing something called the Surgibot. And the Surgibot is a much lower entry point cost, um, uh, about a, a third or of the value, roughly, of uh, the average Da Vinci system. Um, it has not been FDA approved yet. They were supposed supposed to get approval last month. Uh, it got pushed back to potentially getting approval this month. If it does get approval, then they're going to go out and start pitching it probably to smaller hospitals that haven't been able to pony up the million dollars plus to buy the Da Vinci. Um, there's some advantages. They, they claim that you know they've got a system that provides with uh, better feedback to the to the doctor, uh, haptic feedback, um, an articulating camera uh, that could be you know something that doctors would favor. Um, and you know you don't have to sit behind a console and be that far removed from the patient. You know this is a mobile system that theoretically can be moved from operating room to operating room. But again, Transenterics is a very very small firm. They don't have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. You know they're just they're going to launch this thing and basically hope that demand is big enough to to be able to you know eventually carve away a little bit at a time at Intuitive Surgical's dominance. And then the other company um, is, of course, much bigger. I mean, this is a, we're talking about uh, a combination uh, between Johnson and Johnson and Google Life Sciences. Um, they created this company called Verbs uh, Surgical. Uh, they're going to mold, take you know Johnson Johnson's vast experience in surgical instruments and med tech, m put that together with Google's experience in analytics, and try to come up with. Um, a better mousetrap than Intuitive Surgical. But you, they just got started last year. Who knows when they might even have a product uh, that could uh, compete in this place. So one final question on this topic. Looking forward, say, three to five years, do you think this is a winner-take-all market? And if so, which of these three ventures would you put money behind? No, I don't think it's winner take it all. I mean, you know, you, last year there were 652,000 procedures done via robot. That was about 20% of all the procedures that have been done uh, since the first Da Vinci rolled out 15, 16 years ago. You know, procedure volume is growing exponentially. It's 12 percent uh, to 14 percent a year. And, you know, as it stands right now, Intuitive Surgical thinks that without any further innovation, their target market uh, is four, um, uh, four times, well, more than four times as big as it is today. You know, I mean, there's 50 million surgeries that are done in the U.S. every year, 200 million done worldwide. I think that this is a, a market opportunity that's got a lot of long legs. Um, the way to play it, if you're interested, in my opinion, would be intuitive surgical. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, keep your eye on these other players.